crops. Even the world's longest, the Nile is a river of secrets and superlatives. The longest tributary of the longest river starts here, deep in the heart of East Africa. The White Nile starts with the melting snow of the Ruenzori and the rain of the mountains of Rwanda and Burundi. From here, the river starts an epic adventure through vast lakes, rapids, and remote swamps in wildest Africa. Flowing through South Sudan, the White Nile seems to vanish into the continent's largest wetland. Then it joins forces with the Blue Nile, the river's largest tributary, fed from the Ethiopian highlands. From the mountains north through the desert, the Nile passes the relics of the great civilizations that it once supported, onward to its final destination, the Mediterranean Sea. The collective drops will travel over 7,000 kilometers to reach the sea, making the Nile the ultimate river. The largest city in Egypt straddles the Nile. Egypt's capital, Cairo, is bound by desert. The river is the lifeblood to its 11 million residents. As long as 5,000 years ago, around when the pyramids of Giza were built, the Nile was believed to be a gift from the gods. The Nile Delta fans out north of Cairo, stretching 200 kilometers to the Mediterranean. The river's sources lie over 7,000 kilometers to the south in East Africa. Waters flow from all over between Lake Victoria and the mountains of the Western Rift Valley. The valley is flanked by a massive range, the mysterious Ruanzori Mountains. At over 5,000 meters, these are the highest headwaters of the Nile. On most days, this blanket of clouds lifts enough to expose one of Africa's highest mountain peaks. Her glaciers feed the waters of the Nile. The ancient Greeks knew about this snow-capped range in the heart of Africa. On maps, they labeled them the Mountains of the Moon. lie on the border between Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mount Stanley guards the Nile's sources. Its high summit, Margarita Peak, is 5,109 meters above sea level. The mountains trap humid air from the Congo Basin that turns to rain and even snow at these elevations. In the language of the local Batoro people, Ruenzori means 
Rainmaker. In this wet wonderland, sources of the Nile are hidden in a fantastical forest in the heart of Ruwenzori National Park. Great groundsels rise from the swampy soil. These relatives of the daisy can grow to over six meters. But these primeval plants are dwarfed by the even taller giant lobelia. Lobelias produce a single flower stem that can grow to an amazing eight meters tall. At this elevation, Lobelia provide much needed high energy nectar. And this attracts a very colorful pollinator, the scarlet tufted malachite sunbird. This male flashes his iridescent colors. He's territorial and will keep other males from feeding on his favorite Lobelias. The leaves of the giant groundsels offer shelter to the sunbirds. At the end of the rainy season, the females arrive from lower altitudes. It's time to get busy. The male's long tails catch the eye of the opposite sex in a case of bigger is better. The courtship starts with chirp and trills. Trembling and vibrating, he displays his smooth moves. The male chases the female, but she won't play hard to get for long. This sunbird is monogamous. He is dressed to impress and flashes his scarlet tufts. The female gets to work building her nest just a few feet off the ground. When her chicks are ready to fly, the female will retreat to the warmer altitudes until the next breeding season. While the male will stay to defend his Lobelia territory. In equatorial mountains, days feel like summer and nights feel like winter. The Nile crosses tropical forests and deserts, but gathers momentum in the cold mountains. The plants here have adapted to sub-zero temperatures. The hairs on these leaves provide insulation like a winter coat. of the Ruwenzori Mountains belongs to the Nile. It can't escape. Water that evaporates from the river is trapped by the mountains, raining down again to fill thousands of rivulets. As it collects, the water plunges from the alpine altitudes to a mountain forest.
Below 4,000 meters, mountain streams flow past ferns, mosses, and gnarled trees, overgrown with lichen. Dominating the hillsides of the Ruenzori Range are stands of giant tree heather. Its relatives in Europe are shrubby, but here it can grow 10 meters tall. A fire has swept through the area during a dry spell. And taking advantage of the tender new sprouts, there is a rare sight the Ruenzori Red Diker. This small endangered antelope is only found in these mountains, preferring elevation above 1,000 meters. Numbering at just a few thousand with a shy, elusive nature, the life of this diker is a mystery. It may take years until the burned forest looks this lush again. Descending farther, the Nile shakes the spell of the cold mountains and enters dense evergreen rainforest. It hasn't yet achieved river status, but the water it brings is vital to an amazing array of species. This venomous green bush viper is on the hunt, able to strike in milliseconds. Birds, beware. This beauty is the Ruanzori double-collared sunbird, it's unique to the mountains of the Nile's headwaters. At least five different species of chameleon live in the Ruenzori Mountains. The coarse chameleon is particularly tough, living up to 4,000 meters above sea level, where temperatures can reach freezing too cold for eggs to survive. So it gives birth to up to eight fully developed young at a time. The Ruenzori three-horned chameleon is unique to the East African mountains, where it lives above 1,000 meters. The rare Ruenzori plate-horned chameleon is endemic to these mountains. This chameleon's color mimics his surroundings, but it indicates his mood. Green means he's a calm chameleon. Sharp eyesight and a lightning-fast suction cup tongue are the chameleon's weapons of choice. In a tenth of a second, he snatches his prey.
For flies, there is only one safe place. Tarakas are hidden high in the rainforest canopy, but they give away their location with their purring sounds and loud calls at dawn and dusk. The great blue Turaco is the biggest in its family. Turacos are the gardeners of the rainforest. They eat the fruit and disperse the intact seeds throughout the forest. The great blue Turaco is widespread in its range and lives in large groups, unlike its relative. The Ruenzori Turaco prefers to live in pairs. They spend their time feeding in their favorite fruit trees. Turacos have a unique characteristic that is known to no other animal. They accumulate copper pigments from their food that is expressed in their vibrant plumage. The colors tend to be more intense in birds that live in lush habitats. The Ruenzori Turaco is only found in the Albertine Rift region. Here, the Ruenzori Mountains were formed when continental plates moved and squeezed the metamorphic rock upwards. Now, the water from the mountains travels down through the forests and gathers in lakes. The water from the Ruenzoris is collected in lakes in the foothills. Lake Edward is one of the great lakes of the Albertine Rift Valley and part of the Queen Elizabeth National Park. Herds of Cape Buffalo call the rich park grasslands home. Erupting volcanoes once threatened this area. Now the hardened lava and craters form one of the most stunningly beautiful landscapes in Africa. The headwaters of the Nile are scattered across an area of thousands of square kilometers. In the west, melted snow and mountain rain feed Lake Edward and continue to Lake Albert, finally entering the Nile. Among these many headwaters, geographers have pinned down the Nile's sources to three main areas. The farthest southern point from the Nile Delta lies at the base of Burundi's Mount Gikizi. Also, significant amounts of water flow towards Lake Victoria from the Ruenzori Mountains and Rwanda's Nyungwe Forest. Nyungwe is a cloud forest. It rains here virtually every day. The abundant water in this mountain forest quenches the Congo Basin to the west and feeds the Nile in the east. And here at an elevation of over 2,900 meters is the highest point of the Nyungwe, Mount Bigugu. Water from this remote scenic mountain will meander through four countries towards the Mediterranean Sea, ultimately becoming the world's longest river. Nyungwe National Park is a treasure trove of life with 86 mammal species and 310 bird species, many of which are endemic. A quarter of Africa's primate species are found in this forest. 
and at almost 1,000 square kilometers, it is the largest protected mountain rainforest in Africa. This local dance ritual, in Torre, is performed by young men, symbolizing the king's chosen warriors. Today, long grass wigs replace the traditional headdress, which was made from the skin of a coveted hunting trophy, the Angola colobus. of the Nyungwe, colobus prefer to stay in the forest canopy. They move in troops, with one male overseeing several females. In Nyungwe National Park, these social groups can include as many as 400 animals. The babies are born with white fur which will start changing color at three months. But he'll still stay with his mother for another year. This young monkey's fur has already turned gray. Leaves are the main cause for the Angola colobus. They digest this high-fiber fodder through a multi-chambered stomach to extract as much nutrition as possible. Living in a treehouse has its advantages. The forest floor crawls with a merciless army. Driver ants. They will attack anything that crosses their path. Female worker ants go to battle for food. The front line ferries the bounty back to the nest. Soldier ants equipped with massive jaws protect the females. Their vicious assaults are extremely painful. Driver ants are among Africa's most important carnivores and scavengers. Their collective biomass rivals that of all the forest mammals combined. They have strengths in numbers, with millions of ants participating in raids. forest is surrounded by tea plantations. Every square meter is cultivated. Rwanda is one of the world's most densely populated countries. From above, the national park looks like a jungle island in a patchwork sea of fields.
The national park is home to 13 species of primates, including red-tailed monkeys. This monkey is a real character. Red-tail monkeys commonly live around colobus, manga bays, and blue monkeys. This one has left his own family to embrace the company of colobus. It seems he's asserted himself rising to the top to become the ringleader. The monkey gang targets some eucalyptus trees beyond the tea plantation. The workers seem unaware of the gang's advance. For the monkeys, this is a test of courage. The ground is not their domain. The red-tailed monkey leads the way. The wary colobus gang follows. accomplished. Australian eucalyptus grows fast. It's cultivated for timber all over tropical Africa. But our gang appreciates it for other reasons. The lure may just be salt. A rare sight, African monkeys in eucalyptus trees, just like koala bears. The feast is abandoned and the gang returns to their safe spot, high out of reach. The Nile leads Nyungwe forest in a discreet manner by way of little bubbling streams, dripping moss and roaring rivers. In spite of countless detours and meanders, the growing body of water eventually leaves the Western Rift Valley and travels east.
the Kagera River collects water and crosses the borders of Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania and Uganda to feed the mighty Lake Victoria. This vast expanse of water is Africa's biggest lake and the largest reservoir of the White Nile. For over a century, the lake was thought to be the source of the Nile. It provides the single greatest contribution of water to the longest tributary. Over 30 million people depend on the water of Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria has a surprise under her surface. Here are evolutionary wonders that were discovered as recently as the 1930s. Living throughout the lake at depths of 60 meters and in shallow sandy bays on the rocky shores. These are the incredibly diverse cichlids. Over time, it's possible one species evolved miraculously into 500 by adapting to the ecological opportunities of this lake. The males of the species show off in bright orange, while the pale females incubate the fertilized eggs in their mouths to keep them safe. After hatching, the fry stay there for another eight days with short forays to test the waters. As many as 100 cichlid species in the lake may be threatened, ravaged by a voracious predator, the Nile perch. The perch was introduced to Lake Victoria in the 1950s to boost the fishing industry. With no natural enemies, the perch multiplied and within 50 years wiped out 90% of the cichlids. When a fish intruder devours the locals of a lake the size of Ireland, it classifies as a natural catastrophe of biblical proportions. The local fishermen may take a different view. For them, cichlids are merely bait, but the Nile perch means cash in their hands. The shores of Lake Victoria are lined with fish processing plants that sell the perch to the world. The perch drove the cichlids to the brink of extinction, but they are big business. Years ago, 50 kilo specimens like this were common. Today, the perch population has declined dramatically due to overfishing, both in number and size. When the first Nile perch were introduced to Lake Victoria, only 8 million people lived in Uganda. Today, the population has grown to over 37 million. With population growth comes stress on the environment. The lake is polluted. 
Near the shores, algae multiply and then decay, depleting oxygen levels and in turn suffocating the fish. Water hyacinths imported from South America to decorate garden ponds were flushed into the lake and are now smothering blankets on the lake's surface. There is good news. Biologists from the fisheries department cruise the lake to sample fish populations. They confirm what the fishermen have feared. The Nile perch are on the decline. As the perch trade diminishes, there is hope for smaller fish. The tide has turned. The economy suffers, but some of the cichlids may survive. While the water quality by the shores is poor, the lake as a whole is recovering. In Uganda, some of the Sesi Islands are sparsely populated, others completely uninhabited. Near the shore, there is life at all levels. The shallow water is a nursery for sprats and reptiles. Thousands of birds tend their nests, including a colony of village weavers. Village weavers are the master craftsmen of Africa. They collect the material for their architectural masterpieces from the shrubs and meadows near the shore. The males sport a bright yellow plumage. The females are less showy. The males build their nests with purpose. They want to impress the females. The base is a skillfully woven and rapidly tied mesh of knots and loops. Privacy and distance from the neighbors seem to be of minor importance. Below, the water dickup and the quaint hammercock mill about. The hammercock feasts on fish and frogs. The Nile monitor can grow up to a length of two meters. For the pied kingfisher, a hungry monitor is a threat to her eggs. They are spared this time. Above the lake, dark clouds are hovering like smoke from distant fires.
But these are clouds of billions of flies. These are so-called dancing swarms. The males ascend and descend, producing a humming sound that is irresistible to the females. They mate in the air, in a spectacular orgy. A medicine man is visiting the island with musicians and assistants. He treats the fishermen in exchange for money, establishing contact with their ancestors and predicting the future. Fragrance of frankincense and medicinal herbs mingle with the aroma of smoked tilapia. The medicine man is both doctor and sorcerer. He cures illnesses and talks to spirits. The rooster may predict the young fisherman's future. If he flies off, it signals a bad omen. If he stays put, all will be well. The man is lucky. The rooster doesn't move. The fishermen set out to cast their nets. Their lamps will attract the fish. Lake Victoria embodies a mysterious Africa and is the main source of the White Nile. Here in the north of the lake, the Nile takes shape and bursts into life, rushing over the rapids on its way to the sea. From here, the mighty Nile continues its epic journey through the heart of one of the last untamed landscapes of Africa.